So you see how bridges take enormous amount of loads of vehicles passing one after the others, allowing them to pass an obstacle like a river, a roadway, or a waterway. Well, certainly they take the load of heavy loaded trucks, but still manages to stay strong for lifetime, like around 100 years or so. But the golden question we've been asked for is what makes bridges so strong? You know, the strength of a bridge is its essence, and the top priority of any bridge is safety. A pedestrian bridge must be strong enough to support people, cyclists, animals, and light vehicles. So, that's where experts called engineers come in to design elements or components so strong to carry the designed or intended load. For the bridge to carry that much load, the engineers uses different types of materials like concrete, steel, or maybe wood. They arrange these members or elements of a bridge in a geometry. Their combination, their quality, and their quantity, everything is crucial to make bridge strong. But why we need to build strong bridges? Well, that's because we don't want the bridge to collapse. So our main objective is to determine the design load for a bridge and satisfy that with the design elements. Let's find out what happened when we overload a bridge with more people or stuff. So you see it collapses. That's why we need to build stronger bridges. And we do this by using stronger elements and stronger materials. Take a look at this simple bridge we call it as beam bridge. Now if this bridge is of a wooden cardboard, it will take not much load. But if we build it using a steel plate, it will take much more load in comparison. So you see, selecting the type of material is critical in making stronger bridges. The other factor to make stronger bridges is geometry. Take a look at this bridge made of truss elements. You'd see how its elements are slim and slender. But what's the secret here? Well, the secret here is its geometry. Simple. It's geometry. I mean, its elements are arranged in a way that all the members are in either compression or tension. I've got another explainer video about different stresses, so make sure to have a look at that video. Well, the bridge here is a steel truss bridge. And to your surprise, it has to be strong. You know why? Because it has to take the load of heavy trains. If you take a closer look at the bridge truss, you'd see it has got some triangles doing the trick. Well, if you know it or not. The triangles are strong when used in buildings. When you apply the load on the side of the triangle, it bends, but it won't go anywhere if you apply the force on the tip. That's the trick behind why the bridges made with trusses are stronger and can carry heavy loads. So, when a car travels on a truss bridge, all these triangles distributes the force in a way that it collectively converts forces in to tension or compression. Another type of bridge we normally see is a suspension bridge. One famous example of a suspension bridge is a Golden Gate Bridge. Now let's see how we build suspension bridges. Suspension bridges are made to carry and distribute the load as tension. We support the deck of the bridge with suspending it using tension elements. These tension elements are nothing but ropes or wires that tightly carry the deck. These wires are then hung on the tall towers that take the load and distribute it on the soil below the river at the extreme ends, we got the anchors that stabilize the bridge overall. Now, the other most common types of bridge is that of reinforced concrete. These bridges use concrete that is reinforced with steel bar carefully placed inside during casting bridge elements. Most concrete bridges are founded on pile foundation that are dug deep beneath the river. Above these piles, we got a pile cap giving a foundation for the bridge piers. These bridge piers then carry the load of the deck slab. Now, to your surprise, concrete is an element that's strong in compression, but once we add rebar inside, it becomes stronger in tension, too. That's how the engineers design reinforced concrete bridges that we see as flyovers or bridge decks. So, you see, it's not just the material that makes bridges strong, but it's also the geometry or the smart design with how the bridge is built. That's for passing by and spending time with us. I hope it's worth it for you. If you've learned something and want to ask more, give us a quick note in the comment section below. We'll reach out to you. Thanks.